The next section in chapter 3 talks about the review process. And in a general way, we divide our review process into two types, formal reviews and informal reviews. First, we talk about the formal review process. What are the steps that make the formal review? First, planning. We first plan for the review. Then initial review. We begin and initiate the review. Then individual review. Each team member begins to review the document. Then issue communication and analysis. We begin to communicate about the issues and analyze them. Then the author fixes and reports the defects in the work product. So let's talk about every step in a more detailed way. First, planning. In planning, we define the scope. We estimate the effort of the review. We identify our characteristics of the review, the type of the review that we will do, what are the roles inside it, what are the activities, and if we will use checklists, we begin to plan for them. We select the people that will participate in the review and allocate roles between them. We define our entry criteria and our exit criteria, and then we check that our entry criteria is met. Why? Because we cannot move to the second step before making sure that our entry criteria is met. The second step is initial review. In initial review, we begin to distribute our work product to the participants or the reviewers that will participate in the review. We explain our scope, our objectives, the process, the roles, and the work product to the participants. For example, I send them an email explaining all these things and telling each one of them what is his role inside the review. We answer any questions that they have about the review. Then each individual of the reviewers begins the individual review or the individual preparation. He begins to review all or part of the work product. If he finds defects, he begins to note them. If he has any recommendations or questions, he begins to tell us about them. Next step is issue communication and analysis. We begin to communicate identified potential defects. For example, in a review meeting, we analyze potential defects. If we found them, we analyze them and assign ownership who is responsible for these defects and what is their status. We evaluate and document all our quality characteristics, the non-functional characteristics. And when we find the review findings, we begin to evaluate them and compare them with the exit criteria so that we can make a decision. Is our work product ready or not? The last step is fixing and reporting. We begin to create the defect reports and the author begins to fix the defects that we found. And when the status of the defect is changed, we begin to update it. We gather any metrics that we want and check that our exit criteria is met. If our exit criteria is met, then we can say that our work product is accepted because our exit criteria is reached. So this is the review process. It begins by planning, initial review, individual preparation, issue communication and analysis, and at last, fixing and reporting. So what are the roles and the responsibilities inside the formal review? The first person is the author. The author is the person who created the work product under review. He fixes the defects in the work product, if necessary. So this is the person who wrote the work product, and he is the person, of course, who fixes the defects inside it. The second person is management. Management is responsible for review planning. So this is, for example, the team leader or the manager. He is responsible for the first step in the review process, which is planning. He is the person who executes the control decisions. He is the one who performs control. He decides when will the execution of the review be done. He assigns the staff, the budget, and the time. And of course, he monitors cost effectiveness. Is the cost that we are investing in the review effective or not? Are we gaining outcome of it or not? The third person, the third role in the review is the facilitator, which also is called the moderator. This is the most important person in the review process. He is the one that ensures that the review meeting is run in a good way. If there are different points of view in the review, he is the one that mediates between them. He is the person upon whom the success of the review depends. The fourth person is the review leader. The leader of the review has the overall responsibility of the review and he decides who will be involved in the review and organizes the review meeting. The last person are the reviewers. The reviewers are the persons that will review the work product in our project. They may be persons who are experts in the subject that we are reviewing, people who are working on the project, stakeholders. 
So for example, we can invite our project manager to the review or any individuals who have specific technical or business background. They identify defects in the work product that we are reviewing and they may have different perspectives. We don't want them all to be testers or developers. No, it is better that we have different perspectives in our review. Now we will move to the review types. We have four major review types and they vary in the level of formality. So the first review type is the least formal type and the last review type is the most formal type of review. The first review type is informal review, which is also called body check, pairing or peer review. This is something very informal. The main purpose of it is to detect potential defects and we may gain possible outcomes of it, which are we may generate new ideas, we can easily solve the minor problems in our project. So the informal view means that you and your friend are reviewing a document. You wrote a test case, for example, and you gave it to him so that he reviews it in a fast way for you and give you feedback on it. So it is not based on any formal or documented process. There is no problem that we don't have a review meeting. The person who does it may be the colleague of the author, which is the body, like we said, or any other people. Results may be documented or may not be documented. You have the choice in it. It varies in usefulness depending on the reviewers. We can use checklists or not in it. It is very commonly used in agile development. The second type of review is the walkthrough. The main purpose of the walkthrough is to find defects, improve the software product, consider alternative implementations, evaluate conformance to standards and specifications. We may have some additional purposes of it, which are that we exchange ideas about our techniques, we can train the participants, the reviewers, and we can achieve consensus and make sure that everyone is satisfied about the work product. So the walkthrough is a type of review. The leader of it is the author himself, okay? Me, the author, for example, I am the product owner, I wrote the requirements and I made a meeting with my team so that I explain the requirements to them. So in the walkthrough, individual preparation before the meeting, which is step number three in the process, is optional. The meeting is typically led by the author himself. The scribe, which is the person who writes the meeting minutes, what happens in the meeting, is mandatory. We must have a scribe. We can use checklists or not. It can have the form of scenarios, we have some documented scenarios and we explain them or dry runs. Dry runs means that we have everything documented but without executing anything or type of simulations. All of these types are used for educational purposes because the author wants to explain his work product to us. We may produce some defect logs and review reports and it varies in practice from quite informal to very formal. The technical review this review is technical, so it is more formal and more specified than the body check and the walkthrough. The purpose of it is gaining consensus and detecting potential defects. We may have some possible further purposes. We evaluate the quality of the work product. We can generate new ideas. We can motivate and enable authors to improve future work products. We can consider alternative implementations. So the technical review, like we said, is more formal. The reviewers should be technical peers of the author or technical experts. So we cannot bring someone who doesn't understand our product. If we are reviewing test cases, the reviewers should be testers. If we are reviewing the code, the reviewers should be developers and persons who understand coding. We cannot bring the product owner in this case, for example. We must perform individual preparation before the review meeting the review meeting is optional. We may communicate online using a tool or we may have a review meeting. And in the ideal case, the review meeting is led by a trained facilitator who is not the author. The scribe is mandatory. We must have a scribe and he is not the author. We may use checklists. And typically, in the ideal case, we produce defect logs and review reports. The last and most formal review type is inspection. The purpose of the inspection is to detect potential defects, evaluate the quality of the work product, prevent future similar defects using author learning and root cause analysis. It has also some possible further purposes. We motivate and enable authors to improve their future work products by using root cause analysis and we achieve consensus. So here we don't 
stop at finding defects. We also search for the root cause like we said in chapter one and try to solve it so that we have a type of process improvement. In inspection, everything is formal. We have to perform everything in a formal way. It follows a defined process with formal documented outputs based on rules and checklists. It uses clearly defined roles which are mandatory. We must have roles, a moderator, a reviewer, a manager, and so on. And we may have a dedicated reader. The reader is someone who reads the document in the review meeting before we make comments about it. He reads the document aloud so that we hear what he is saying and then talk about it. We must have a type of individual preparation before the review. The reviewers are experts or peers of the author. So also like the technical review, here the reviewers are people with technical expertise. We must have specified entry and exit criteria. We must have a scribe. The review meeting is led by a trained facilitator, which is not the author. The author must be the author only and does not have any other role in the review. He cannot act as the review leader, the reader, or the scribe. We produce potential defect logs and review reports, and we must collect metrics. Any type of review that is performed by people on the same organizational level is called a peer review. So if all the reviewers are juniors or seniors or developers or testers, this is called a peer review. But on the other hand, if the same review contains a manager and a team leader and a senior and a junior, this is not a peer review. Now we will talk about the review techniques, the techniques that we will use inside our review, whether it is a formal review or informal review. The first type is ad hoc review. Ad hoc review is the review that does not contain any type of planning. So we just provide the reviewers with the document and we don't give them any guidance on how they should perform reviewing this document. This technique is commonly used when we don't need a lot of preparation or we don't have a lot of time and it has two problems. The first is that it depends on the reviewer skills. If the reviewers are not skilled enough, the review will not reach its objective. And it also may lead to many duplicate issues by reviewers. So we are two reviewers reviewing the same document at the same time, and we don't have any guidance on how to review it. So me, for example, I found 20 defects and my friend found 30 defects. Maybe 10 of our defects are duplicate. So this may lead to wasting a lot of time producing duplicate issues. The checklist based review is a systematic technique which we have a checklist that is distributed at the review initiation, at the second step of the review process, for example, by the facilitator. So in this case, we have some questions based on potential defects and we derive them from our experience. So here, when we are reviewing our document, we try to find the answers of these questions and we try to find the defects that are written in this checklist. The advantage of this technique is the systematic coverage of typical defect types. So this is a systematic technique that has some formality. In this way, we may gain a high percentage of coverage of our work product. You as a reviewer should not stop at the checklist that is provided to you. You should also think out of the box and try to find defects outside of this checklist. Scenarios and dry runs here, the reviewer is provided with a structured guideline on how to read through the work product. So we give him the whole scenario that he should use during reviewing the work product. So this type of review gives the reviewer more guidance on how to find defects more than the simple checklist entries. And also the reviewer should not stop at the scenarios that are provided to him. He should also think out of the box and try to find other scenarios in the work product. The next review technique is the role-based. In the role-based review, we review the work product from the perspective of individual stakeholder roles. For example, experienced user, inexperienced user, senior child, a teenager, or roles in the organization like system administrator, performance tester, security tester, developer, product owner. So here, we focus on a specific role and try to look at the work product from the role of this person and try to find defects in the work product from his perspective. The perspective-based review is a little different from the role-based review. 
In the role based, we made a lot of focus. Okay, so we have the end user. We divided the end users into subcategories like a child, a senior citizen, experienced user, frightened users, and so on. But in perspective based review, we perform a type of zoom out. Okay, we think from the perspective of the stakeholder, but we have a small number of viewpoints like the end user in general. We don't specify the type of the end user, okay? The marketer, the designer, the tester, or the operator. The perspective-based review is a very good type of review, and the empirical studies showed that the perspective-based review is the most effective technique to review your requirements and your work products. The last thing in chapter three is the success factors for the reviews. First, we will begin with the organizational success factors. Each review should have a clear objectives, which is defined inside review planning, and we use it as a measurable exit criteria. The review types that are applied in the review are suitable to achieve our objectives that we specified in planning. We should also use the suitable review techniques for our goals, and if we use checklists, they should address the main risks and be up to date. Any large document should be written and reviewed in small chunks to provide early and frequent feedback. The participants should have adequate time to prepare for the review. We should notify them that we have a review and give it enough time in our schedule. The managers should support us in the review process. The people related success factors for reviews are first, we should choose the right persons to involve in our review. The testers should be seen as valued reviewers. The participants should give enough and adequate time to the review. The reviews should be conducted on small chunks so that we don't lose our concentration inside our review. So if we have a large document, we should divide it into more than one review meeting. The defects found should be acknowledged, appreciated, and handled objectively. The meeting should be well managed. The review should be conducted in an atmosphere of trust. Participants should avoid negative body language or behaviors. We should give training to the participants, especially in the former review types. We should always have a culture of learning and process improvement in our organization. If you want to solve more questions on chapter three, go to yodimi.com and search for ISTQB 2018. Our sample exams are now bestseller. So I want to thank the persons who bought them. You can go there and buy them. Now there are some positive ratings about the exams and here chapter three and chapter four, you can solve questions on each chapter in a separate way. And also don't forget to use the coupon that we talked about in the first video. I'll provide it into the description so that you have all the exams for only $10. Thank you and goodbye. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.